unmute. Let's set up the camera. That's the microphone. Oh, I don't want to admit anybody. I thought I had. Good morning. Good morning. I tried to set up the meeting so I didn't have to in admit anyone, but that didn't work for me today. <laughs> Darn it. There's Lorraine and Corrine. I'm going to go make my coffee. 749. All right. Correct. in here? I didn't miss anything. <laughs> Kathy joined us, Kathy Garcia. Yep, she, I think she was here before. I heard voices. Hi. Oh, nice background. Good morning, Corrine. Good morning. I've got that PowerPoint. It's all queued up. Great, thanks. Sure. I didn't see your text till late it's, last night. It's okay. I was kind. I had a moment where I was like, "Oh my gosh, it's PowerPoint. I have Safari, but it launched in Google Slides, so I'm solid." Good. Yeah. All right. Let's see. I'm gonna change my my thing and my other thing. Let's change my. It can, it can much better. Oh, admit, I don't want to admit people. <laughs> Not admit all. Are you enjoying retirement, Susan? I am. It's a little weird, but yeah, I miss the people. Yeah, you hear a lot of people saying that it's weird at first, so. I'll get there, though. It's, it's mostly awesome. Yeah. yeah. 
<sighs> Capturing everyone who's joining. Hi. Corinne, I just made you the co-host. Okay. Um, I tried to set up the meeting so that people would just enter and I wouldn't have to admit them because I was thinking when someone else has the slides, nobody's admitting people. So uh, it didn't work for me. <laughs> I thought I saved it, but I still have to admit people. I wonder if they changed it because of the problems with all the hacking. Well, they said that there were three ways that if people had a... Mm, did you have to enter the password to get in today? Nope. Okay. So I turned that off. So I bet if I turn that back on, then people, then people could come would in. be admitted. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm going to go finish pouring my coffee. Yeah. That's so hard for some people right to do though. Yeah. It is. Especially if you're doing it on your phone. Yeah. I'd rather they automatically were entered. Because everyone's getting there. Okay. Yeah. For those of you who are on here, we are going to be doing a um, raffle again this month. So we appreciate your purchasing raffle tickets, and you can do that by going to the chat and uh, telling us on chat how many tickets you want. I think we have three prizes. I don't know if Chris, are, is your audio on, Chris? It is. Yeah, so we have something from the gallery? Um, sure. <laughs> I have a gift card from the dock, and then I have a gift card from Carter's and Company, too. So, so hopefully you'll chat and buy some raffle tickets. <laughs> Did somebody uh, purchase raffle tickets? Because I'm at the ready now. Yeah, no, I just made that announcement, so. Um, go ahead and put them in the chat. Oh, my God. Chris, do you have raffle, the official raffle tickets? Because that would make my life so much easier for next meeting. We did talk about that last week, didn't we? Yeah. I'm not sure who has them, but. Um. We have a ton of old ladies' night out raffle tickets you could use. Well, what I want to do is not have to write everybody's name 20 times. I want to use the pull off tickets because then I can count 20 and I don't have to. Oh, wait, I still you would have, have to, to still write it. their name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. No All way right. around that for the moment if we're going to do it this way. Exactly. So. All right, Corinne, I got you for two. So I can win back my doc gift card. <laughs> <laughs> oh. and, and for those of you who are on here listening, then um, I think we decided once a month if, if you that we would bill you, or maybe even once every two months, we would bill you for raffle tickets. Or you can do like, like I try and do and just set your money aside today and run it yep. down to Chris. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah, that would work too. Yeah. Whatever you, what works for you, we're just trying to keep a little income flow going in and, and give away gifts. That's great. Uh, okay, let's see. 
I'll wait a couple more minutes here. I have a $10 gift card for O'Reilly Auto Parts. Oh, okay. That I'm happy to donate into the raffle today. Okay. Got my. Are you also going to announce baskets or planters? Yep. Okay. And I'm going to do five raffle tickets myself. Add into the chat. Okay, let's see here. Our guest speakers want me to resend the link. Oh, what did I do with it? King is here, Robin's here. <sighs> Fine Arts Litho's here. Good morning. I'm grabbing all the names as people join the meeting. Thank you. That's awesome. We're getting this down, aren't we? <laughs> we are. Hopefully, don't have to for very much longer. But anybody getting vaccinated? Is everybody awake? You're all so quiet this morning. Good morning, Karen. Good morning. I'm opening my yesterday's mail while I'm sitting here. I'm working on raffle tickets. If anybody wants raffle tickets, you can put it in the chat. That will help us track. Melissa, I'm sending it right now. Okay. 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 Bye. Just working on getting our speakers in. And we are so glad everybody is here. Board members don't come. I know, why not? I was just thinking the same thing. Where are our board members? <laughs> I whispered that. That was really <laughs> on our recording. I'm here. Hi. Hey, Robin. <laughs> I want uh, 10 raffles. Can you write that so that I catch it too? Okay. I'll see if I can. I've never done that before, so I'll, I'll figure it out. All right. Well, I've got you. I, I got it. Robin Corrine two. Monica five. Fine Arts 10. Robin 10. And if you don't play, what's this? 318. Green wants three. Uh, oh, you're that was last month. <laughs> Are you doing last month's accounting? <laughs> oh, no, Green wants two. Three today, Monica for five. Fine Monica Arts. wants a five. Robin for five. How about if I just sent you a um, something from. PayPal, an invoice from PayPal that you could just click on the button and pay it over PayPal. Yeah, and yeah. Okay. Good morning, everybody. We're just about to get started. We're waiting for our speakers to show up this morning. Corrine was in the background doing that. And 
Fine Arts yeah. Litho, it's so good to see you today. I wanted to ask you if you would be interested in being a featured member in our, um, what do you want to call it? Our member, month member highlight. Member highlight that goes out in our email. Sorry, had to unmute. <laughs> We're going to say no on the recording, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, sure, we'd love to. Oh, awesome. I'll get in touch with you then later after the meeting. Thank you. Uh, Lorraine, uh, Mrs. H Mrs. Howes, I'd love to feature you as well. Basically, we'd like to do everybody. Right. One at a time. Well, yes, but not necessarily every, every month, but okay. I'm sorry. I'm just resending these Zooms. That's perfect. Links. Um, I just uh, admitted someone else. Pop D, is that? Yes, yeah, so that's one of our police staff. Go ahead and put yourself on. Okay. If you would, and you can unmute mute and say hello, or you can remute. Corinne, are you ready to launch? Yeah, yeah, I am. Okay. It's, uh, it's a little after eight now. Um, good morning. Good morning. I was busy doing something. How many do we have on here? Nine or 10, 11? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 11. You can put yourself yeah. in the gallery view and see everybody at once. Yeah. Well, we can do better than that. So um, I think we reached 19 the couple, couple, um, first month or second month. So, um, you know, I, we're planning on doing this at least at least for one month more, if not two. Um, but it would be nice to have a, a higher count of people on screen um, to, you know. Well, you talked about not, it a little bit later too. Yeah, we did. Um, so actually maybe, uh, that's a question for right now. Uh, I'll ask this question, but you could answer in chat. Um, is until we meet in person again um, and continue to do Zoom meetings, what would be the ideal time for you to participate? Um, keep it at eight, which was our traditional meeting when we had breakfast meetings, or eight thirty, or nine, or you know, everybody's business starts at different times. Um, and I think you know a lot of the people who actually have brick and mortar stores, you know, needed to be done by 10, but we'd really like some feedback because uh, we'd definitely like to have more than 11 or 15 people Zooming in. Not that you guys aren't important, but um, um, it's better if we have more. So anyway, so I'm going to go over just a couple things really quick and then uh, introduce our, our speakers, our presentation for today. And, just give you about 10 minutes or so update. Um, I will start with the member highlights because Monica was talking about that. And I'm gonna remind you again, actually for a second here, um, that we are selling raffle tickets through chat. So use chat to ask questions. Um, you can do that when we get to the presentation too, either raise your hand on screen or ask a question on chat, but, and buy some raffle tickets. We have a few raffle prizes here this morning. Um, and don't worry about how, We'll get that money from you, but we will eventually. So, <laughs> so but so so Monica talked about member highlights. We've done um, two so far. We did uh, Zena, 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 right, Zena? I know she's on there somewhere. Um, I'm sorry, but I have a dog named Zena, so it's, oh, it's hard to get. Well, it's, I'm it's, Zena. Yeah, Zena. you're Zena too. Okay, that makes it easier for me. Okay. <laughs> same as same as our darling dog. So um, we did her. Uh, her business, um, Crow's Curiosity, just this last weekend in our um, our uh, newsletter, and I'll be putting that up on um, Facebook too. And then we did Mainline Music the month before that. Um, my idea is just to do them as often as we can get them. So not necessarily once a month because you know I'd like to highlight all the members. So I don't want to wait ten years to do it. So. If Monica gets a hold of you, please um, respond to her, send her a couple of pictures and a brief paragraph. She'll ask you some questions. She's helping me do this and 
we'll you know, try to get you a little extra promotion in marketing. And that's probably the number one thing we can provide um, our members is a little extra promotion in marketing. So uh, I will go and quickly go through some of the things we have coming up. You know, we decided, Chris and I decided, if, if you didn't know, last weekend, of course, was daylight saving times. And this weekend on Saturday is the first day of spring. Um, and it's slowly getting warmer. It's been a very cold early spring, at least at my house. So um, we decided to do a, a spring edition of Port Orchard Rocks. We did it last August um, and it went really well. We had lots and lots and lots of rocks painted um, and we hid those rocks around downtown Port Orchard and the waterfront and on, we had a lot of people come out and gather up the rocks and then we did a selfie contest as part of it where they took a picture of themselves and hashtagged um, hashtag PO self ha hashtag rock selfie um, PO rock selfie so we're we were trying to do that again this weekend our original plan is to, to start it on Saturday for day of spring and run it for a week however our rock collection is quite small so there's a good chance it'll only be for over the weekend unless some more rocks come in next week. So I know you have nothing else to do, but perhaps you could paint rocks today. <laughs> who, Corinne, who painted rocks last time? Um, well, quite a few different people in the community, including two of the rock groups, Community Rock Love um, and Fathoms Painted and another rock group, and then just um, various people. And you know, the Community Rock Love is painting rocks again, and so did the Princesses, the Fathoms. We just don't have very many, so um, so we'll hide whatever we have Friday night. But can we put out another call for more rocks? I have, okay. I have several times. So um, just maybe uh, I don't know. Anyway, so that starts this weekend. It's just a little little fun thing to get people downtown. People really like looking for the rocks. So I wanted to mention briefly that um, I know Fathoms is doing an Easter egg hunt crawl. Um, it is not downtown um, because of COVID restrictions. There's, it's really di difficult still to do much with larger crowds. So in, if we have time at the end, I'll let Sharon mention more of that, but it's Saturday, uh, April 3rd, the day before Easter, and it's taking place in the parking lot up at that one place in Bymart. So um, we are still planning on a modified ladies night out on Friday, June 4th. Um, we'll talk more about that. It would probably look a lot like what we did in the fall, which is again, um, not crowds, but spread over the weekend and just, um, you know, encouraging people to come down and shop um, on their own over a three or four day period. So, um, and then I also wanna talk about the, the beautification projects that Port Orchard Bay Street Association does. Um, and, and you most all know about this. We did receive, I think about $1,100, um, 11 different $100 sponsorships for our Bay Street Bloomers, our hanging basket program. And I was, we're really, really, really pleased with that response. We'll still take more money. Uh, we needed a, a, at least 800 to finish purchasing the baskets, the hanging baskets, and those are ordered. Um, but we also needed additional funds to repair two blocks of irrigation. Both the Port Orchard Market Block needs some repair and the Dragonfly um, Bay Street Bistro Block needs repair, although we're still awaiting whether we can hook into water for that block. So the possibility still remains that I'll need um, some volunteers to help water one block, the, the Dragonfly Bay Street Bistro Block of hanging baskets. Um, and it may seem like a difficult task to do, but the group that did it last year did very well. Unfortunately, both those POBSA members have closed their businesses and retired. So I will likely, at least the first part of the summer, need help doing that. So, um, so any additional um, sponsorships is greatly appreciated so we can do our irrigation repair. Um, and for any of you who are new to that, I mean, th th this is a long ongoing program in POBSA. A lot of people think the city does it and the city has sort of had a hand in it, but going forward in the future, we're hoping the city's growing parks department will take on that task because it's getting kind of onerous for us to do. It costs a lot of money um, and the, the irrigation system 
um, needs repair every few years and, um, and we'll see where things go with the marquee. So, but we just didn't want to let it go. And that's so why I'm spending some time talking about it because I think everybody would, um, you know, and for, for Chief Brown and um, Deputy Maine, if we didn't put those hanging flower baskets up, everybody would be mad at the city because they don't realize it's us doing it. So it's a pretty important thing we think to do, especially um, with people being kind of, you know, sad about not being able to gather. So then we also have the Adopt a Planter program. Chris, we're probably still down to about five planters. Is that right? We have four on the brick house block, although I believe that they're taken. I just haven't heard back from the people. And we have four or five on the dragonfly block. Okay. And this is something that community members can do as well. It's, you know, it doesn't have to be a POPSA member. It doesn't have to be a downtown Bremerton. In fact, the, you know, probably at least half are people who are just community members. And all you have to do is adopt a planter. Um, it's not surprising that the dragonfly block is the last to go. Um, that is a, the shadier block. And there it's also our more of our, our shuttered block with not quite as many um, businesses open there. But so think about that. All you have to do is take a planter and plant it. And then of course you have to water it. And that's the hard part. You have to water it and you have to water it and fertilize it and deadhead. But um, people did really well on that last year. And again, for those who um, are newer on this call, we also have two portable watering units on little wheels. They hold nine gallons a, a, a piece and they've got a nine foot wand. Um, so you can do it that way as well. You can go pick those up at the market. So, and then last of all, we have our May Day basket program, which we did not do last year. The first year, as most of you know, was 2019. And when COVID shut us down a year ago, two days ago, yesterday, um, we decided not to do that, but we are doing it this year. That one is a downtown merchant association project because you hang your May Day basket or you display it at your door or in your doorway or right outside. So um, we have the form, I keep saying we have the form ready to go, but it really is almost ready to go. So if you wanna do a May Day basket in your downtown business, please tell us, you can tell us that in the chat and we'll get the form to you or it'll be up on the website, uh, www.popsa.com. Um, and again, you know, that's it. You put your May Day basket up on Friday, April 30th. May Day is Saturday. We'll have judges judging them and then they'll remain up for several days. And it's just something that as people come downtown or your customers, they'll see them. And you can be very clever with them too. You just have to have some fresh flowers and live plant material in them. Cannot be all artificial. You can hang it up, and make it all artificial flowers, but we're not going to judge it unless it has some flowers in it. So, um, and it makes everything look so much nicer downtown. So did I miss anything else? I mean, we have lots other things we hope think will be happening, but um, most of our events still probably won't happen this year, or at least not until fall. And we can talk more about that as we go on. Um, I do know Farmer's Market is going forward and it starts April 16th or 17th or something like that. So, um, it's coming quickly um, and you know, maybe at the end we can talk a little bit uh, with members who have storefronts um, about what kind of you know, business they're getting downtown. I, I know we're staying very, very, very busy at our restaurant, so. That's great. Did I miss anything? Frank, did you mention yeah. is a hundred dollar sponsorship for a basket or for to help keep with the repair of the irrigation is that the yeah it's a hundred dollars yeah so and that makes you a bay street bloomer and um yes so and again i mean i i'm not going to read through the list but we we've had a very nice response and really appreciate that that's great um, we'll do a hundred dollar basket okay great thank you so flowers you will monica is that what you said yeah and um so yeah so we can uh yeah, let Chris or I know in the chat or otherwise, if you know any community groups for the sidewalk planters, a lot of those are done by community groups, um, Boy Scout girls, Girl Scout groups, um, different people. So um, 
and it's really not hard to do. You do have to stay on top of watering, but I'm hoping to have a, a, a couple of volunteers at last year, Mercedes and another gal would supplement, supplement the, the, the adoptees watering by going around doing some watering themselves, so. Okay, um, our guest speakers tonight are, um, tonight, <laughs> this morning, I'm not a very good morning person, um, is our, our chief of police, Matt Brown, and our uh, new, well, not new, um, our navigator, our community health navigator, Melissa Stern. And Melissa um, started, was we're doing this position part-time, and I'll, I'll let her tell you all this, um, a year ago, over a year ago, and, um, and I think the role was shared with Paulsbo or another municipality. And we actually had her booked for March, because if you recall, we had our, our social in January, and then we had one meeting in February at uh, Homemade Cafe. And Melissa was our speaker for March, and then she was our speaker for April. And then I think we even talked about May, and then, you know, we opted not, as you know, to do Zoom meetings until um, the end of this last year. So, so it's kind of like we're just moving on to our next speaker, which is Melissa and Matt, um, Chief Brown. Um, is, is Deputy Maine with you today or not? Yes. So yep, I'm here. Okay. Chief oh, there you are. Chief's Chief. not. Now I can see you guys. I can see you. Okay. So um, I'm going to mm -hmm. turn it over to them, and I'm going to let them, you know, talk about who they are and, and you know, anything they wanna say as far as an intro. I will, you know, say that I served this last year on a um, City of Port Orchard Police Department Community Task Force with a number of other community people. Um, and we were meeting um, a monthly or twice a month, um, both Zoom and sort of spread out in person. And, um, and from that, um, Chief Brown came up with kind of a community plan and, we are going to continue to meet, I think, on a quarterly basis. So, which means there's probably a meeting coming up soon. I need to pay attention to that. So I'm, I'm going to let them talk about that a little bit more. So, um, Donna and Melissa, I'll let you guys take over. And I, yeah, thank you. I oh. have your slide. So, let yes. me know when you're ready yes. for those. Yes, that's right. Monica's going to run that PowerPoint for us. Thank you. That sounds good. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Um, I don't, I have not met everyone on here. I was trying to see who was on. Um, I know I saw Kathy Garcia. I know Kathy very well. Um, but my name is Donna Main. I am the deputy chief uh, for the Port Orchard Police Department. I've been with the police department for almost 12 years. Uh, started off in patrol and then went and I was promoted to a sergeant. And then most recently, Within the last three months, I was promoted to, as the deputy chief when um, our past deputy chief, Dale Schuster, retired after 35 years. I uh, tried to fit inside those big shoes, and they are big. Um, so I'm still learning my position. Um, you know, I, I have a great mentor with uh, Chief Brown. He moves fast, so I got to move faster. But um, we are doing some great things uh, in the police department. I'm, I'm honored to be a part of this team that we have. Um, you know, I, we have some really hardworking people in our police department. I hope that uh, you guys see that on a daily basis uh, in your community and hopefully that you feel safe and that we're doing the right things for you. Um, I don't know, that's about it. I'm still drinking from a fire hose right now, trying to learn my spot. So, um, but if you have questions for me, I'd be happy to take them. Um, I grew up here in Port Orchard, uh, went, elementary through high school here, went off to college, and eventually uh, started a family and came back uh, to be where my parents are at. So um, I've probably been in Port I've probably been in Port Orchard for probably 45-ish, maybe more years. So I am the community as well. I mean, Port Orchard means a lot to me. I appreciate the work that you guys do. Um, and that you find um, Port Orchard to be the same as I do. It's, I, I love this small town and I appreciate the work that you guys do uh, to make our city beautiful and, and add some value to that. So thank you guys for what you do. And I will turn it over to Melissa. She's much more exciting than I am. <laughs> Hello. Um, if we could start the slides, the introductions kind of built into that. Um, that'd be great. There it is. 
So yeah. I am here to speak about the Community Health Navigator Program. Uh, it is a Port Orchard Police Department position now. Should we go to the next one? Someone else will have to steer for me. There we go. So I put up my contact information. My name, uh, again, is Melissa Stern. Uh, my background is varied. I've been in social services for about 14 years. Um, I come from Southern California, where I grew up, Northern California, where I spent my early 20s, uh, Seattle in the city uh, after that, and then finally over to Kitsap. Um, I have a background in, uh, I started in a women's treatment facility uh, inpatient, um, and it was the first in California to allow women to come into treatment with their children, which had never been done before. Um, until then, you had to lose your children via CPS before you could really go to a treatment program, which was tragic. So um, we kind of broke some barriers with allowing children to come into that world of recovery. Um, from there, I got my degree in psychology. I started working with individuals with developmental disabilities, both in their homes and in the community. So I worked as an independent living specialist, helping um, these individuals live independently from grocery shopping and banking to finding housing, um, accommodating employment for them, uh, and doctor's appointments, all of the above. And then the other half of my job, which was more fun, was uh, group social recreation. So uh, to learn social skills. So it was my job to go roller skating into the movies, into farmer's markets with groups of uh, individuals with developmental disabilities and kind of introduce them to social skills and, and practice creating a community around them of, of friends and support group. Uh, from there, I moved to Seattle. I worked with the community psychiatric clinic. Um, my business, uh, they have different uh, facilities all over the place, but mine was in Wallingford and I was a vocational specialist. So again, two parts to that job. The first one was to have a caseload of individuals uh, with mental illness and they help them create resumes, uh, get prepared for an interview, apply for jobs, things like that. And the other half of it was creating those jobs, job developing. So I spoke to chambers of commerce and downtown business associations, um, business owners about, at the time, there was kind of a lot of um, stigma. There were kind of the first mass shootings happening when I was there and it was all blamed on mental illness. Um, so people were very, very reluctant to give these, these folks a chance. Um, very scared. So I worked with business owners to kind of reduce those stigmas and find a way to create positions where both would benefit, you know, um, maybe some accommodations to scheduling or to um, productivity, things like that, but to get people back to work. Um, after that, I started a family, took a couple years off, learned that I am terrible at not working. Uh, so I had to go back to work. Um, I ended up at uh, Kids at Mental Health Services over in Bremerton. We bought a home in Bremerton. That's where we are now. Um, what did I do there? I was the supervisor of the adult inpatient unit. So that's a locked 15 bed facility um, for those that are detained primarily. Um, so I supervised the staff there. The, I was a trainer for a nonviolent crisis intervention for the staff there. And uh, all intakes, discharges, uh, and the milieu, the, the environment there, and how, how people's days kind of went. So that was my role there. From there, I moved into the law enforcement role, and that's what uh, Corrine was talking about. It was originally a city of Palsbo program funded by a grant, and the grant was funded by that one-tenth of one percent treatment tax. Uh, so... We did that for about two, two and a half years. I was always embedded in the Port Orchard Police Department, but under that city of Hallsbo flag. Um, just this year in 2021, and I can get into that. Yep, there's the evolution. Is that the next one? Oh. Uh, two more. Okay. One so more. then just this year, I was officially hired in the city of Port Orchard uh, in their police department. We are teaming up with South Kitsap Fire, and I'll get a little bit more into the history of the program, but that's my history. Uh, the next slide, uh, I think everyone knows by now uh, that mental illness is, if you go back one more. Go back there one. You go. Yeah, there you we got go. it. Mental illness is an issue. Um, 
some 20% of the population 18 and over is living with some form of mental illness. Uh, mood disorders like depression uh, is the leading cause of hospitalization for pretty much everyone. Um, one in 25 adults suffer from serious mental illness that's um, severe bipolar disorder to the point of psychosis, that is schizophrenia, that is depression to the point of psychosis, mania, um, the, the heavy hitters there. We all know, um, I think, especially in our downtown area, that it's not just mental illness. Uh, substance use disorder, co-occurring is what we call it, um, is a big part of that. And it's, I don't think you can untangle the two. Uh, they, they create each other. It's, it's terrible. Um, we, maybe you don't know, jails and prisons are actually the biggest treatment, mental health treatment provider in our country. Uh, a lot of our folks end up um, being prosecuted and going to prison, and that's where they actually receive their housing and their meds and meals and their, their best care, which isn't the best. Um, lots of people don't receive treatment. It's scary. Those that have those severe mental illnesses actually receive less treatment than those with more mild cases. Um, and our inpatient psychiatric hospitals, I know I hear a lot, everyone says, you know, they take them somewhere, they can't care for themselves. Even if you could meet that bar to be detained into an inpatient unit, uh, the average stay is three to five days. So they're not going away for any amount of time to, to receive this, you know, more fulfilling life. And that's kind of a misconception I wanted to address at the beginning. So the next slide is kind of the history of the Navigator program and how we came to be. Now that we know about mental health, uh, we started off actually in Port Orchard first, um, first and last. So we were a court program um, in municipal courts. What was birthed from that was our current behavioral health court just up the hill in district court. The first two navigators, Mindy and Matt, are actually the two social workers working in the behavioral health court. Uh, they found uh, some value over there. But other than that, we started getting requests from police departments uh, and a couple of prosecutors. So we were always in Paulsville Police Department. Bremerton had a lot of requests next, so we moved a navigator into there. After that, Bainbridge Island wanted their navigator. Uh, and finally, Port Orchard, which is where I came in. It's here for a couple years, like I said. In 2019, we became officially uh, police department employees instead of kind of this city grant uh, outsider kind of in the police department. There was value to being official police department employees. And then, like I said, in 2021, uh, Port Orchard, the grant went away. We kind of, from the ashes of that grant-funded Paulsbo program, created this community health navigator position. So we're teaming up, like I said, with FIRE, equally funded by both, so South Kids Out Fire and Rescue, broadens our scope from just like the, the little city jurisdiction out to all of South Kitsap. Their range goes from Olala to Navy Yard City. It's huge. Um, so yeah, we're here now. We changed the name from Behavioral Health Navigator to Community Health Navigator um, because we were, it's, it's a growing uh, organic kind of thing happening. Uh, and we learned that we weren't just focused on behavioral health necessarily. There are uh, fire calls for people that are falling often. Uh, does dementia really fall into a point like a behavioral health issue? <laughs> Housing and food and clothing and all of these basic needs were being addressed. So we brought in the, the title. Do the next one. So Community Health Navigator is, uh, like I said, funded by the city of Port Orchard. Half and half time is split. Half and half uh, our budget is split by the two agencies. And uh, the big, big question is what does the navigator do? So next slide. Yep, next slide. So you guys can see it, there you go. So our mission, um, I'll break it down for you. I connect uh, those that have law enforcement or now first responder contact to treatment resources and services. I have the ability to go out into the field with first responders, but we are learning that more there's more value to actually the follow up. The next morning, a phone call asking, you know, what happened and how can we support you and build things around you to avoid that in the future. 
Um, we, I don't do assessments like chemical dependency assessments. I don't do by the side of the road therapy with lights and sirens behind me because it doesn't work. Um, if I were to take on a caseload, like case management, I would not be able to take another client already because I would have 62 clients at this point. Um, so I, my role again, is just kind of that connection, that warm handoff. Here is what you, what you need to avoid this in the future. And then we kind of wait and see, does that reduce that 911 response or call uh, volume? And if you're still getting calls, I'll work with you again to find out what happened. What do we need to add now? Until finally, hopefully, you live happily ever after and we don't hear from you anymore here in this system. All right. So I, I wanted, I, I brought up three kind of case studies. Names are changed, if you could change the slide just to kind of give an example of what I do. So last year in 2020, I uh, was referred an, uh, an older man uh, and he was living in his car in different parking lots around Port Orchard. Uh, Kate, he was well behaved, but he was getting kind of the victim. He was being, things were being stolen from him or he was kind of getting like assaulted. People would be kind of ugly toward him parked in the parking lot things like that. Um, after talking to him, I learned that his adult daughter had passed away and he had used several months worth of rent and his savings for her funeral and burial services. And now he was in his car for some eight months. Um, he just couldn't, being homeless is actually very expensive. If you want to use the restroom, you have to buy a cup of coffee, those apps up uh, meals on the go I mean you don't have a kitchen so those add up uh, I, he was grieving still and just kind of overwhelmed with the housing uh, process and he just couldn't seem to get ahead without any assistance so he actually did have a retirement kind of account it wasn't a lot of money not enough to afford out an apartment on just a market rate apartment but it did disqualify him from a lot of the housing like low-income housing services so what I was able to do, so the, the services in place weren't able to help him. Uh, we toured some independent living uh, senior communities. We did get some financial assistance, at least for that security deposit, that first and last kind of thing. Um, we, I helped him fill out application paperwork for those apartments. Like I said, he was grieving. He'd been living rough for quite a few months and just sitting down and getting the details of all the numbers and the income and you know, what's his phone number, what's his social security number, things like that for these forms. He was overwhelmed. Uh, I helped him create a budget. Like I said, he did get some money in. How are we going to make, you know, not just spend that immediately, save it for a week so that we can get that to the social, to the security deposit. Uh, so we made a plan for that. And then again, timing uh, the housing to hold that room for him, just do us a favor until his next check could come in so that he could pay the deposit. Please don't give it away to the first person that comes while we're still saving up the money. And they were willing to do that. And Paul was successfully housed. He's living happily ever after. We never hear from him anymore. Um, so he's a success case. And then the next slide, I have three of them. So this is Dan, and this is an example of a youth and a really good example um, for at first glance, when someone looks like they have everything in order, um, sometimes it takes someone like me to take a deeper look at what is going on here with all of these different systems trying to help someone where it's not working. So Dan was a 15 year old. He was abusing alcohol. He was arrested uh, seven times at 15 years old for all of the like theft, assault, robbery, cry, uh, car prowling, domestic violence, things like that. Um, he was failing all interventions. He had been expelled from school. Uh, they sent him to an alternative school. He was caught drinking at alternative school in the classroom. Uh, he was on probation. He was failing every breath test for probation. Um, he appeared to be very well connected. He had a psychiatrist, he'd had a chemical dependency evaluation. He Every week he was going to his meetings that were required of him. What, we wondered what was wrong, what was wrong with this system? And through kind of talking to everyone, it turned out that Mr. Dan had told everyone kind of a different version of what was happening. So when he had his evaluation, he drinks, you know, occasionally with friends was what he told them and they believed him. 
And when he went to his meetings, he has passed every breathalyzer test. He's doing great, which isn't true. Um, his his uh, probation officer knew that he was failing, but couldn't figure out. I mean, he's doing everything recommended. They can't ask him to do more. Um, so it took a navigator to step in and tell his mother what's really going on, that, that he's car prowling, that he's you know doing all these things because she wasn't hearing about it and telling his chemical dependency evaluator how serious this really is, whether or not Dan's admitting to it. So that qualified him to go on to a co-occurring, which is unusual treatment program over in Oregon for specializing in adolescence. Um, so he went off to that. He qualified now that everyone had the full picture. And then our deputy chief, uh, how many months, six to eight months later, uh, noticed that someone's trunk had left their trunk open <laughs> and they hadn't been to the house so in so long that she actually forgot uh, what house she was walking up to, knocked on the door to let them know, hey, your trunk is open. And who should answer the door but Dan? And he said that he was doing great. He had received treatment. He was no longer you know, suicidal. He wasn't drinking. He was clean and sober. He was back in school and he thanked the police department for their intervention. We saved his life. Um, so there's another success story for a youth and one that seemed like it was all figured out, but it clearly wasn't. And then the last case study we're gonna do is Bree and Val. They're in their early thirties. They live in their car. They had 208 law enforcement interactions and 23 arrests between them, um, mostly heroin. Uh, again, Deputy Chief, it was you. Uh, she contacted them for expired registration and when she walked up to the car, there's all the paraphernalia right there in plain view in the car. So this is a good example of how difficult it can be to connect someone and why Brie and Val had such a hard time getting out of this system, of, of this cycle. Um, they wanted to get clean and sober, which is fantastic. So, I mean, we connected them to our local Kids App Recovery Center, dropped them off, great. But it turned out they had the wrong insurance and they were sent out the door. Uh, so, okay, we'll connect them to a bigger city, kind of the detox hospital over in Seattle at Harborview. Uh, it had kind of great stories about how wonderful it was. But once they got there, they were given a blanket and a sandwich and told to wait in the lobby. And if they should have a bad reaction to their detox, like a seizure or something, you know, they're in the emergency room now, so we'll respond then. Bree and Val walked out. Um, we connected them to Harrison Hospital. They were medically cleared to detox at home. They don't have a home, so that's kind of pointless. Uh, so we coordinated with a family member who reluctantly allowed them to detox in her home, but they needed to get out as fast as possible. She, they had burnt their bridges with much of their family. Um, this was kind of a, a reluctant agreement, but we got someone to let them kind of be on the couch and detox. Um, they were able to connect to ABHS residential treatment program from there. Now that treatment program doesn't do detox, so they needed to detox somewhere before they could get there. And then from there, they actually both graduated uh, successfully into Oxford House, clean and sober kind of transitional housing. And they're another success story. We don't hear from Bree and Val anymore. Um, yeah, they, they, they're doing great. So those are the kinds of things that a navigator would work on and do. Uh, and that's it. Those are some examples. Does anyone have any questions? <laughs> I can uh, just I can state just a few things if you want regarding uh, the navigator's position from law enforcement side, um, having worked uh, in the field for 11 years dealing with people that are coming from all walks of life from homelessness to to drugs and alcohol or both combined or mental health issues or homeless. Um, I mean, I've seen uh, a lot of people at their very worst. I can't imagine living, uh, you know, walking in their shoes. Um, their their bottom uh, day, you know, I can't even, I can't get there in my head. It must, it has to be horrible. So um, I can say that the navigator position really, um, it's an amazing position where uh, as a law enforcement officer or as first responder, 
um, you know, we see people at their very worst and it's super hard because we get into this job to be servants and that's what we do. We're public servants. We want to help and fix things. Um, so when we have to walk away after dealing with somebody that may be having, you know, some type of crisis, whether it's mental, alcohol, drugs, whatever it is, and we can't offer the fix. It's very, it's, it hurts on our end because we want to fix things. I mean, that's why we do this job and help people get better. And, and sometimes we have to walk away. And so when, when the navigator position came around um, and it was just really a blessing where we could actually provide some uh, services that the police have never had before. And we didn't have to tell them that there was nothing that we can do. We, we have nothing for you. You're going to have to figure this out on your own. Well, people in crisis don't figure out things on their own. They don't, they can't do that. It's overwhelming. And so by adding this navigator position, I mean, we really cut down on some of our recidivism rates and given people some opportunities to be members, be productive members of our community. And that's what really is the goal here is to, to help people, to give them a hand up and get them on the right track to be a member of our community. I can tell you that the people, you know, that I've run across with that are either addicted to drugs and drugs are, um, if you're addicted to heroin or meth, it's very, very difficult to get off of those drugs on your own. You have to have a support system. And unfortunately, most of those people um, have burnt every bridge uh, of their support. They have no one else to turn to because getting that next fix is really the only thing they're concentrating on for the remainder of that day. So to be able to be in front of somebody, because when you talk deep to some of these people, you know, if they could go back to the day they actually tried heroin and meth, they, they would love to go back that day and then and make a better choice. Unfortunately, they didn't make that choice and now they're addicted to this drug and, and, the, and the drive to have it is so overwhelming that you and I probably cannot understand how something could uh, be so powerful that you would steal from your own parents, that you would abandon your children, uh, that you would um, steal from stores or, or not be able to have a job or just not take care of yourself mentally and physically you and I can't probably fathom what that would be like, but we see it every day. And, and to be able to stand in front of somebody that is in crisis and give them uh, some hope that there is hope out there. And, and her name is Melissa Stern in our behavioral health uh, navigator. And it's, it's just been so, it, it's the piece that, that law enforcement has been missing. have um, questions regarding um, trespassing or lingering. I mean, there's also some theft. I know we were told down at the market we had to have no trespassing signs up in order to really um, get a definitive response. And we did that. But I think if you could, and, and I want, you know, if anyone else has a question, raise your hand or say something in chat. But uh, what should our downtown merchants um, business owners and or, you know, um, property owners do? What's the, what's the steps when they have an issue, whether it's, in our case, it's literally people sleeping in the doorways, um, you know, relieving themselves in the doorways or against the building and then, you know, theft and stuff like that. What's the best steps forward? Well, uh, the best step is to, to, to call 911 when that happens. I mean, we want your business to be thriving because when you thrive, the community thrives. And, um, you know, we, we're aware of, we probably know all of the players that are down there that are homeless. And, and for some reason, the waterfront is attractive to a lot of our homeless people. And it's, I guess they like nice views as well. So um, I, I, we can't blame them for that. So but what business owners can do is, is to dial 911. Um, all of our calls 
uh, for law enforcement go through 911. We don't have a non-emergency line. So everything would go through there and don't feel like you're bothering us. You're not because that's what we're supposed to be doing. Uh, we'll come out and, um, you know, if you have somebody sleeping on your property, um, it's your property. And if you don't want them there, we'll certainly uh, move them along. And, and then again, we'll try to get them some resources. That's where Melissa comes in. Um, yeah, if you have somebody that's uh, urinating, I mean, that's certainly not something we want to have happen. Um, and if you have people that are stealing your stuff, um, that's not something we want to have happen either. And, and you don't have to uh, be a silent victim of any of those of those circumstances. So um, you certainly can call the police. I would encourage you to do that. And, and we'll try and take care of that matter. Um, if we have to trespass them, if you don't want them on your property ever again, you have the right to do that. It's your property and we can make that happen as well. We'll document that. But I would encourage you, the first step is always to dial 911. You're not bothering us. It's literally what we get paid to do. Um, and I would encourage you guys to do that. I want you guys to feel safe in your community. Um, and I, I don't want you to have that. It's even in our mission statement. We want to eliminate the fear uh, you know, in crime downtown. So we need you to call and, and we'll address the issue. So I don't know if there's any other questions on that, if I answered it. I think people are, um, you know, especially if you, I mean, if, you know, we're all, we're all caring people and, um, and um, uh, you know, people have different uh, levels of um, experience or skills or even education when it comes to nurturing and social work and all that. So it's very difficult sometimes to call the police for something that you know is a difficult problem. But I know what a lot of the businesses downtown worry about is their customers not wanting to come in, come back, whatever, if they, you know, um, because a lot of people get very uncomfortable viewing these kinds of situations. So um, I'm, my staff at the restaurant at the market has gotten very good about being able to handle people Yeah, that, yeah, and that person was um, not causing my business any issues, but um, threatening um, someone else who was getting increasingly uncomfortable. So, yeah. Probably. Yeah, yeah no, and, I. And again, it's somebody very well known downtown who used to even um, hold a job at one of the businesses downtown. So, yeah. Um, and, and Melissa is aware of that person. I won't say his name, I guess, out loud, but we're very much aware. And, and she has tried and is connecting this person to some services. But again, it's, you know, bringing that horse over to the water barrel and hoping that they drink out of it. You can't force them, but you hope they do. Um, and that's been a long term um, uh, process with this person to get them on track. But it's it's a hard process. We're dealing with people that have, that are mentally unstable at times and it's very difficult. So yeah, feel free to give us a call. Does anyone have any questions? Um, anyone at all? You know, one thing that, um, because we, you know, we had some discussion of this a month or two ago um, because of some break-ins or, well, break-ins, but just theft business was open. And I wondered if there was any value of POBSA having a side committee to address this. This, um, you know, we're we're a bigger group than who's on Zoom here. We've been as um, had a membership as big as ninety people. They're not all downtown business owners, but um, I mean, I don't. I'm not going to force that, push that, unless there's some interest. And even just on a, you know, maybe a once or twice basis, where a, a, a few business owners might sit down with 
you, both of you or Melissa, um, to more specifically talk about issues or certain people and just get the advice. Um, but I, I, do, I do really encourage you to call 911. And once we got in the habit of doing that at the market, we kind of got control over the situation. And we, had to, we also had to lock our bathrooms um, and put a coat so, on. Yeah, I was gonna speak to that. Um, there are programs, mostly in the South, where uh, there are more religious groups than um, treatment agencies in the area. They just outnumber. So it's cops and clergy is the program that kind of came out of that. Um, SNAP a nutritional benefit to can direct them to the warming center as a place to go. Um, and then from the warming center, connection to shelter services, you know, buying them the sandwich is a band-aid for this moment that may lead to, you know, them being around more and, and all of this, you know, trouble that you guys are there. And, and it might be smarter to kind of coordinate our response. Mm -hmm. And if every and directs them to the service where they can get more out of it than a sandwich, it might benefit them in the long run. Sure. If that makes sense. Yeah. So we get a group like that, a, a larger group of downtown business owners um, to discuss how we can coordinate efforts might be valuable. Okay. Yeah. I have a question, Melissa. Yes. Uh, you just mentioned the uh, KITSAP helpline. Um, and directing people to actual services. I think that sounds like a really great idea. My question is, um, do you by any chance have some kind of brochure with um, like yes. uh, something I can hand out just if someone comes in and they ask for, look, I'm hungry or I need help with whatever. And I can just hand them this brochure and say, okay, get in contact with these folks. They'll hook you up. Yes, here is everything you need. Um, are they organized and capable enough to kind of make that phone call? They don't have a phone, you know, sure, come to our office. I don't have a car. Like, there are some barriers, but yes, we do have um, flyers that can get them uh, any service in the area that they might need. And then we can work on those barriers, you know, from there. So it, it might be real helpful if we had some of those in different stores downtown or at the market. Yeah, can you email it to us and we can send it out to our membership? Yeah. I'd be happy. That'd be great. Sure. Yeah. I think there's a lot of ways we can get that information disseminated. Um, and, you know, maybe I, you know, yeah, maybe we need to talk about that a little bit on social media as well. So, um, Marina, I don't have a question. I just have a comment. I don't know if the downtown merchants are familiar with the coffee oasis closet that they have for the homeless because Seroptimist stocks that. Mm -hmm. And one of our Seroptimist members has done an absolutely fantastic job organizing that closet, which any of the homeless kids can go in there and get whatever they need. And I just wanted to make sure that you guys are aware of that. You know, it, I, I, you know, I guess I kind of knew that. Um, I think it would be really helpful if, if a couple of um, Hobson members would gather that information so we can share it with all the members, whether it's, you know, a brochure uh, like uh, Zena has suggested or your suggestion or Melissa's contact information. Um, and so they know where to turn aside in addition to calling 911. Um, yes. So I think that would be very helpful. So, you know, let, let us know, let any of us board members know that information or what information you're looking for. And um, we'll see if we can have a couple of members who will gather it and share it. That, that would be, and, and then maybe, you know, if, if there's enough interest, um, there might be a couple of you who want to sit down um, in person or in Zoom or whatever hybrid mix um, and discuss this further with Melissa, so. And Kathy Garcia, did you raise your hand? 
Kathy? No. Where are you? No, she okay. said no. So I want to thank you both for, for um, you know, doing this presentation today and joining us this morning. Um, again, it took a year, Melissa, but here we are finally. Um, and, you know, and, and it's, it's very difficult for all of us because of um, COVID, um, the restrictions, um, you know, even just trying to do this by Zoom. Um, you know, I'm pretty sick of Zoom meetings. I do a lot of them. I really prefer to do it in person. So, um, but that's, that's where we are still. So um, one year later. So I'm gonna move on to a raffle unless anyone else has any other questions. I will say something, Green. Yes, so, not, not a question, but a comment. I just wanna really thank the Port Orchard Police Department. Um, we've had tremendous response and just the um, partnership and knowing that we have a, a police department that cares so much about our downtown and our city, um, it's it's pretty amazing. And the, the officers that we have, um, Deputy Main included, are they're just they're just so important to our community and we're so lucky to have them. Yeah, you know, and I agree, Kathy, it's um, so nice to have somebody like um, Donna, Deputy Main, um, who's from this community mm -hmm. and, Absolutely. and loves this community the way um, all of us do, whether we've lived here all our lives or been here 10 years or whatever. And that's really special to have somebody who um, understands the community because you, you don't understand the community as well if you've only been around for 18 months or five years or whatever. So, um, and you know, but we're still a small city in a small department. And I know that the having served on this task force, there's a very, very strong commitment to making sure that they hire the right people. Um, and there are some positions open and they're working on that, but, but because there's a lot of volatility and, and we don't have really time to go into that too, but on, on the other side in, in, um, getting the right person in the police department so that they're a fit for the community um, and there's no issues on that side of the table. So, um, and I know they're very, very conscious of, of getting those right people to be part of our city. So, um, but thank you again, Melissa and Donna. I really appreciate it. And thank um, yeah, thank and, you for having me. And that I know that Melissa amazing. is available to speak to other groups. I know Kathleen chatted on here that she's going to be speaking with the library. And so, you know, other groups, um, uh, you, that's what you guys are there to, to go out and do. And that was a lot of what we talked about in the task force is how to reach out better to the community and engage the community, which is again, very difficult because of COVID right now. But as we move out of COVID, um, uh, welcome you guys to contact Chief Brown or Melissa or, um, Chief Maine and, and go from there. So, but we. You got a couple on. Anybody there? You got you. You have the people that bought tickets. Yeah, I've got um, Corrine, Monica, Finer, okay, well, Santo, me... and Robin. Any other raffle tickets? You can raise your hand. Wave well, at me. Well, we're. Well, we're giving a minute for that. Um, I do want to mention that next month, we are going to do a Zoom meeting again next month. And our speaker is Joe Morrison, who's the executive director of the Kitsap Economic Development Alliance. And he's been in that position for, I don't know, six months or I don't know how long, Steve? Less than a year, he's been in that position, um, six, eight months. And um, from our community, um, which is always great when um, a countywide organization just happens to hire somebody who's part of our community. That's just a, a bonus, a win for the South Carolina community. So Joe, so Joe will be our speaker in April. And I think that's the 21st, but don't quote me on that, whatever that Thursday is. So I hope you all zoom in and he can um, give us a, a bigger overview of how the, the larger kids up community looks economically, which is actually not too bad. Um, Kids up's going a, a, a right direction. So, it's so the, we have the fifteenth, April fifteenth is the April fifteenth. That's right. It's tax day. Yeah. So I told you not to listen to me. So, um, so let's go ahead and we'll draw first for this. Uh, Wait, Corinne. I think dollar. we have one more comment from you. Got more POPD. Corinne, I have a just a comment real quick, if you don't mind. Uh, Please, absolutely. Uh, we're gonna jump off if that's okay. 
Um, I appreciate you having us both on board so that you could all, everyone could learn about what Melissa does and the fine work that she does. Yes. I appreciate your guys' support with the police department. And again, as a business owner or a community member here, please do not hesitate to give us a call. If you need 911, please call 911. Don't feel like you're bothering us. You're not bothering us. It's what we want to do. So Kathy Garcia, thank you for your kind words. I appreciate that. Christy, I see you out there. Kathleen, we'll see you soon at the library. And everyone else, thank you for having us. Appreciate thank it. Well. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, so Monica, who you got for a gift card? And what are we what ready? Is it that you just you just held up. I have a forty dollar. I have a forty dollar gift card to the doc. Oh, all right. Well, I want to just make sure, just in case my name's drawn, that you see yeah. that this is official. And don't draw it's my name. For Robin. Robin Scott. See, I mean, yeah, we're not selling that many tickets, so your chances are good. So, um, and then, yay, yeah, and then you had an auto, uh, Riley's auto I have parts a ten dollar gift card wanted. for O'Reilly's auto parts. And just so you know, I I did a rebate with them. They mailed me a gift card, so I'm donating it. And this is going to oh, that's so funny. I drew my own name. I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna draw again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Robin Scott won again. Can you see it? Who is, is that... it? Who won? Robin. Ro Robin? Well, she bought lots of tickets. So right. I have a gift card to, to Carter's. I can't remember how much it's for. I think it's for 10. Um, that'll be a surprise. Fine Arts Litho. Fine Arts Litho? Fine Arts. You're breaking. Okay, good. You're breaking up a little bit. Um, and w one more thing. I think we have a picture, um, a, a, a small art print or something, Chris, from the gallery. Yes, I've got a springy art print at the gallery. Okay, let's draw one more. And that is, that's also Fine Arts Litho. See what happens when you pay $10. Wow, double winners. <laughs> yes, that, see, your, your chances are good. So, I will say that the Carter's gift card and the Doc gift card will be down at the Doc for down to the Doc too, so that uh, you can just come down there and pick it up and make arrangements with Sydney Gallery. So. Christy, are you in your office? Are you in at the shop or are you working from home? I'm at the shop. Yeah. Okay, I'll drop it by. Then I, then I can give you my $10 for my tickets. Okay, that works. Okay. Yeah. And for that matter, you know, anyone can drop money at the dock. Just put it in an envelope, put pops on it, put my name on it. My staff is uh, very accustomed to doing all kinds of things for all the other businesses and projects Steve and I are involved in. Um, they just put it in the till and keep bugging me to come pick it up. So, you know, I want to address one more thing really quick because, you know, I know we're getting on to almost 10 after. Um, you know, I mentioned at the beginning, well, actually I want to address two things, but about, you know, we're really here to try to promote and market your business. And it's something that I'm particularly focused on. And um, as many of you know, I share your stuff on social media. I look for your stuff. I go to your page to see if you have done anything recent. Um, and I mention that because we've done a social media um, workshop in the past. I'm willing to do another one. Um, it's not something I want to try to do by Zoom. So you'd have to be willing to socially distance and meet. Um, and we can do that if there's even two or three people who want to take that to the next step, um, just let us know. I mean, that's, that's easy for me to do. I have access to our office, which has a great big room with a big Zoom, um, I mean, a big conference table and a big TV. So um, if you want any additional help or um, assistance on doing more social media, it's, I, I'm, I know you guys know this, I'm just a big fan of it. Uh, it's, very, very cheap. And we have a number of people in our group, um, Crow's Curiosity is very good at it too, um, who, who make a point to do social media. So 
And the last thing I wanted to mention is that, you know, if you haven't gotten your dues in, I think probably everybody on this call has. We'd sure appreciate it. We did not push dues last year. We are pushing dues this year. We want to get to 90 people. We're 50, 55 renewals. Um, and if you have a new business, if you there, if there's somebody downtown that you don't think is a member, never has been or hasn't been for years, um, we can get you forms, um, applications, membership forms. You can also go online and do it. Um, help us get back up to 90 uh, members. Um, we're a much stronger group. And as we go into phase three on Monday and um, more and more people are coming downtown. Um, I mentioned that before. I mean, our restaurant is slammed. Um, we have more staff than we've ever had. So any other closing comments? I mean, Sharon, you need a minute to talk about anything? Yeah, tell us what's going on at the port. Well, I meant, Car I meant Sharon King, but um, oh. Kathy is welcome to make any comments too, so. Well, we are going to do the Easter Candy Lane crawl. It's work. It's in conjunction with the Kitsap Mustang Club. They're going to be the ones that will be passing out candy. We will have golden ticket prizes that we will be handing out in a unique way. And we're also doing our typical free stuffed toy critter to anyone who wants one. We've got roughly 600 stuffed toys that we're going to be handing out. So we hope that we have a good turnout of cars. The gathering point is up at the theater and then they caravan down the hill through a progressive line and zigzag in and out of the Mustang Club car show and hold out their baskets and hold out their bags and we put these candy in it. So we're not doing eggs because it's just not, it's just not right to do an egg and then figure out, okay, are we going to recycle the eggs? Or how are we going to do it? So we just said no eggs this year. We're just going to do kind of a trunk or treat thing and go for it. The school system has sent out our flyer to all the elementary schools. So we hope we have a good turnout. That's I'm just sorry. really amazing, Sharon. Yeah. Sharon, do you need any donations of Easter candy still or how's that being handled? We'll always take donations for candy because we are going to have to buy more because Say, for example, if we have 20, 20 members of the Mustang Club handing out candy, we need to help provide them with candy if we have a big amount. So any candy would be appreciated, and uh, I'd be happy to come pick it up at the dock, like Corrine said. Okay. Kathy, did you have something to share? Anything? Sure. Sure. I just would like to... Um, let everybody know that we have a, a really robust list of visiting voters that are already uh, reser have reserved with us. It seems like this year people just want to get out. Um, even though they are, there's uncertainty about events. They they're still coming. So um, we're gonna we're gonna do our voter bag again this year, and we invite any businesses to provide us with a coupon or something of value to the voter to help drive them to your business. It's just a really good way to connect with them. Um, when they register with us, we give them a free bag full of whatever you guys put in it. So uh, take advantage of it. It's a pretty inexpensive way to get our, you know, voters up into your businesses. Kathy, can you, is there a deadline for that or you'll just add stuff through the summer? We, we're, um, we actually have emailed, you may have already received an email from Brandy Taylor with, um, with the marinas here she's trying to reach out to everybody uh, now because we've ha already had um, yacht clubs visiting so we're collecting now um, of course memorial weekend is our biggest time but um, we'll, we'll take things now and then we run all the way through labor day after labor day into october okay maybe if you could send me something on that kathy so i can make sure it goes out in our emails to our businesses so yeah i'll have brandy send that to you and when she's talking about, you know, something for their, their swag bag, it, it can really be anything. I mean, I've done coupons before. You can be an actual item, just, you know, something that, you know, we, we used to put our map, walking map into it. We haven't produced that um, for a year or two um, for lots of reasons, obvious reasons. Um, it'd be great to have that produced again, but 
Yeah, we've had, we've had the candy shop do little bags of jelly beans. We've mm -hmm. had insurance companies do pens. Mm -hmm. We've had just a discount coupon. It can be anything. Um, I think you did cups one year. Uh, I did. I did. Doc. That was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that was, you know, the first year that we had the restaurant. So I'll see what we can do again this and year. So I have a question on that, Kathy. In the past, it was like, mm, I don't know, 3,000 items or something like that, coupons to go into the bags, and it was two phases. Do you have a recommendation or suggestion? I would say start with 500, you know, if you can, and we'll let you know when we're running low, mm -hmm. uh, give you enough advance notice, um, since it is kind of an uncertain year still, but we do have pretty good... Uh, the marina was full last weekend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, people people are voting. Um, they are, it's their little isolation area, their place that they can still get out and and do things. And they want to shop. They want to spend money. Yeah, yeah. So, well, I'll pass that information along. So, thank you. Anyone anyone else before we close for the day? The ladies' night out because I was just thinking we need items for that. Can we talk a little bit about that as well? I, I don't think we here. Who? Kathleen? I don't know if Kathleen's still on or not. Um, and we, you know, we haven't gotten really far on that. Um, no, Kathleen looks like she's gone. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think we need to, we need to sit down now that we, you know, we know we're going into one phase, but we also are getting more information and I won't go into that now from the city okay. on what they will allow and won't allow on city property. So um, we're still in a tough spot that way so let's revisit that next month great i'd like to be on the ladies night out committee is that kathleen that's in charge of that yes okay yes. i'll connect with her thank you i appreciate that so yeah anyone else I think we're losing people i appreciate your guys coming um so i think we had maybe 20 at the most here steve's here he just wasn't logged on so i'm counting him um Good job. But, yeah. So, you know, and I mean, I, again, am willing to do this if we have 20. I mean, if we're only going to have 10, I'd rather sleep that extra hour. Sorry, guys. Um, so we have to have a meeting, Kareen. This yeah, is so well, I'm, I'm, I'm down with that, but I've got to make it work for everybody. So for sure. anyway, so thank you all very much. And uh, we'll talk again soon. Okay. Bye. Bye. Hey, Monica. Yeah. I think the only one I didn't get was Robin. Um, Robin was 10 raffle tickets and Susan Lee said she'd take three, but I didn't see it. So her name didn't go in the raffles. So I don't think we should charge her for those. Okay. So I, off the hook. Um, I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm Corrine for two, Monica for five. Fine Arts for 10 and Robin for 10. Wow. And then I'm going to come by with my $10. So $5 for this month, five months for last with and $100 for the basket. And I'll bring that by to you. Okay, I'll be at the gallery about 1030 ish if you want to stop by then. Okay, that's perfect. Yeah, I've got to leave town at 1045. So that's awesome. I'll do that. Okay. So I'll be there. I'll be there about 10:30. And then I, my internet was unstable. I'm hoping the recording worked out because I made Karina co-host as well. Um, and the gift certificate that I had for O'Reilly's, did that go to Robin? Did anybody catch that? Uh, that went to yes, Robin. It did. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Yeah. I'll make sure. Yeah. I, surprisingly, I my internet seemed to be stable the whole time, which doesn't always happen out here where I live. So that's great. Yeah. So I think we're we're good. So okay, I'm going to turn off the recording then.